The phenomenon we call a tsunami is a series of large waves usually generated by a violent undersea disturbance in the ocean, like an earthquake. The waves travel out of the area of origin and can be extremely dangerous and damaging when they reach the shore. But there's a lot to be learned in the aftermath, as the videos will reveal. Amidst the chaos of these natural disasters, there are unknown creatures, unbelievable curiosities, and unexpected creations. 15 Strangest Things Discovered after tsunamis. Harley Davidson. You would think they'd only see a motorcycle speeding down a highway. It's not an unusual sight to spot a leather jacket clad man on top of a Harley Davidson. He may even have been going 90 miles an hour, looking cool. Now, what if we told you that a Harley Davidson washed up on the Canadian coast? It was a Canadian man who had gone exploring on an isolated beach in British Columbia's Graham Island, and then he spotted something that he never thought he'd see at that beach, a Harley-Davidson motorcycle. It was inside a container that was registered in the Miyagi Prefecture. This was an area that was hit hard by a tsunami the prior year. Many people believe that the motorbike just drifted across the Canadian coast. That makes sense because tsunamis bring some crazy force. Now came the task of trying to find out who owns the bike. Not that it would probably work anymore, but Japanese authorities are trying to figure it out. Here's to hoping that man gets his bike back. Here's to also hoping that no tsunamis take it away from him. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. After the terrifying experience of surviving a tsunami, there's often a lot of rescue and recovery to follow. With that, some very unexpected things can turn up. These alien coins are no exception. One has the torso of an alien-like torso surrounded by what appears to be Latin script. The other has an alien-like face and profile with the words Liberty in the year 1937 and boast onto its surface. Are these coins for real? If you look at a timeline of the history of money, most will start with a barter system where livestock was the primary means of trade. The oldest currency currently known is that of the Chinese, who used shells for trade as far back as 2000 BCE. Following that, bronze imitations with pictorials were created and could be thought of as the world's first coins. But it's safe to say that nowhere in the history of coin collecting has currency looked like this. Do aliens even have currency? And what about the date of 1937 could this discovery reveal? That's not even that long ago. How much could these coins be worth? Surely you have some thoughts. Leave us a comment down below using the hashtag SweetTopic. Entire dock. When you think of the docks that boats fit into, you probably think of something like a massive structure. It will sit in the waters peacefully waiting for the boats to arrive. Now you can imagine that dock going missing? We'll make that even more interesting. Now imagine the dock showing up in the United States. Maybe even Oregon. This sounds like a pretty far-fetched thing to happen, but the truth is a huge dock that was torn from a Japanese port via a 2011 tsunami washed up about 5,000 miles away on the U.S. coast. That means that it traveled across the Pacific Ocean. And this was no small feat, because it was a 165-ton structure. Not only that, but it was made of concrete, metal, and a lot of other materials that wouldn't make it easy to travel. Luckily for everyone around it, it tested negative for radiation. But scientists said it's not on the waters yet, no pun intended. They found a host of invasive marine species that probably hitched a ride across the Pacific as well. So how long did it take for this dock to travel across the world? Experts believe that it probably took around 15 months. It was an earthquake that resulted in a tsunami which most likely shifted the dock. It's also got some family members out there because two other docks are still missing. So if you're at the beach in the US or anywhere around the world, keep an eye out for those missing docks. Starfish Graveyard This next one is pretty sad. Thousands of starfish that washed ashore at the beach in Ramsgate in Kent. People are looking at them as heartbreaking photos. They were taken by wildlife enthusiast Laura Macklem. She spotted this sight while she was walking with her five-year-old twins. That's got to be traumatizing. It wasn't only this beach that this occurred, but it had spread to several other beaches as well. Not only was it more than one beach, but there were more than one species that washed up. There were dead fish, sea urchins, and some lobster. She even spotted some false teeth. 
Scientists believe this wasn't some monster that did it, it was a mix of terribly cold weather. This is odd because a lot of the species that washed up could deal with extremely cold temperatures. They even knew how to avoid storms. Even more surprising enough is that it isn't a rare occurrence. It happens pretty frequently. It said this happens about once a year during the winter months. The last known documented time that this happened was in Portsmouth in 2016 via a store named Angus. And there was even one that happened in 2013. All we can say is that we're lucky it wasn't people that washed up on shore because that would have been an even worse sight. <laughs> Cargo free-for-all We've already spoken about the dock going missing, which is pretty unbelievable enough if you think about the sheer size and weight of it. But what if we told you that an entire cargo ship with 270 containers had gone missing as well? This comes out of the German island in the North Sea. The containers had fallen off a Panamanian flagship. It was one of the world's biggest. It all happened because of terrible weather conditions. There's already been a warning to people to beware of the cargo ship as it might eventually wash ashore. This would be very hazardous to anyone nearby. The cargo ship carries tons and tons of containers. To be exact, this one carried around 270. It's being said that the containers floated southwest toward Dutch waters and then about 20 containers had washed up on the shores of Dutch islands. It was the Coast Guard who warned the public to stay away from the containers because not only were the two containers dangerous, but they also had hazardous materials inside which haven't been located yet. So if the floating containers weren't a problem enough, you don't have to worry about toxicity. Sounds like a lot of problems. This is probably why we stay on land. <laughs> Japanese fishing boat. We've already spoken about big boats going missing, and now we're going to talk about what went missing for two whole years. That's a long time to be gone. It's pretty hard to fathom something so big can go missing for so long, but this is exactly what happened with a Japanese fishing boat. It was a small fishing boat that got displaced 4,500 miles by the Japanese tsunami. It landed on Washington Beach about two years after the horrible natural disaster conservationists had discovered the 20-foot blue and white fishing boat because it had Japanese markings on it. The official to find the boat says that the boat is probably a piece of debris that had been cast adrift by the 133-foot wave in 2011. But they needed to confirm first with Japanese authorities. Then the Washington Marine Debris Task Force, which specializes in collecting data on all the items that had washed up from the Japanese disaster, was brought in. They also cataloged other beach waste. As with most things that wash up ashore like this, people wondered whether or not it was dangerous. Hazardous waste is always something to worry about, but luckily for anyone who has come into contact with it, there doesn't seem to be any oil or hazardous waste in the vessel. But there are various marine life and barnacles. That's to be expected. <laughs> Mystery Creature It looks like something straight out of a horror movie, maybe even a scene from Jaws. Caught on camera after a Japanese tsunami, no one quite knows what this image is. The only thing people can agree on is that it's a creature. Is it a supernatural creature? Some type of fish? That's what's up for debate right now. As you can see at the end of the video, this creature seems to jump out of the water and move almost like some sort of ghost fish. Some people in the comments even believe that maybe it was a spirit leaving a body. The tough part about this is that it's making it out on camera. Even when you slow it down, you can't quite make out what it is. This has left people and viewers scratching their heads as to what it could be. There are plenty of theories going around as to what it is, and no matter how much you slow it down, everyone could have a different opinion. What do you think this mystery creature is? Is it a fish? Is it a spirit caught on camera? Maybe one day we'll find out. Until then, it's all just going to remain a mystery. A tsunami mystery. <laughs> cannonballs. So that's where those cannonballs landed. Sometimes there are things in history that go missing, and when they're found, it's pretty historic. That's the case as Hurricane Dorian had unearthed Civil War cannonballs at a South Carolina beach. It may have not been the most romantic thing on Earth, but it was a couple who had discovered a pair of cannonballs. Initially, they thought it was just a rock. Boy, were they surprised. It's insane what hurricanes can unearth. Usually, it's tsunamis. But this time, the hurricane unearthed cannonballs that were around 100 years old. You can't blame them for thinking they were rocks because the cannonballs were around 8 inches with a 3-inch shell. The couple had gone out looking for things on the beach and forgot their metal detector. 
The local safety department cartoned off the area to make sure any explosives with the cannonballs wouldn't be surrounded. Because even after a hundred years or so, you can still never be too safe. Now they should probably go find soldiers that these belong to. They might be looking for them. Ancient Roman City We here at The Supreme love it when our list just keeps getting bigger and bigger. What we mean by this is that we've already touched on a boat in the dock that had gone missing. Those are two pretty huge items. Now let's top them. Let's talk about an underwater city that was lost after a tsunami, and it's been missing for around 1700 years. It was an archaeologist who would come across a vast network of underwater ruins and discover it was the ancient Roman city known as the Neapolis. It was a tsunami that washed it away 1700 years ago. What they found amongst the rubble were some streets, monuments, and around 100 tanks used to produce garum. Garum is a fermented fish sauce that was a popular condiment back then. It might even be a significant factor in the economy. The team that found it said he had pointed at a major discovery. It would allow them to establish with certainty that the city was a major center for the manufacturing of garum, saltfish, and so much more. It's a crazy thing to think about that you may be looking for other things and you come across a giant city. It only makes you wonder what else Mother Nature has hidden from us for so long. <laughs> Japanese Fish Now we can forget about the boats, the giant cities, and everything else that's been found because now we find some tsunami fish. And they're pretty colorful. It was a bunch of scuba divers right near the coastlines of California who found this next discovery. They were in the Monterey Bay area when they spotted the exotic tsunami fish, which had been thought to have crossed the Pacific with the breeze following the 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan. It was one of the biggest tsunamis to hit Japan in a long time. It was so big that they pushed these fish across the world. What they found was a 15-inch barred knife jaw fish. It was an unmistakable find because of its broad stripes. The interesting part about the fish is that it said no one knows if it's just one or many. People have speculated that they're seeing the same fish over and over again. In any case, it's pretty impressive how far this fish is traveling. The Pacific Ocean is a pretty big place after all. We now know it's not only people who get displaced after large storms. Those fish lose their homes as well. Hopefully, the bear's knife jaw enjoys California. If not, it might have to wait for some mudslides to get back home. Or fish. We've already seen the fish arrive because of a tsunami. Now people are a little scared that because they're seeing a certain fish, it could mean that there's an earthquake and tsunami on the horizon. Growing fears of an incoming natural disaster in Japan have been circulating online after people have seen deep water fish that are believed to be a harbinger of earthquakes and tsunamis. That's not good. The fish in question is oarfish. They were discovered after being caught in fishing nets right off the northern prefecture of Toyama. So far during the season, there had been seven spotted, and that's a pretty big number compared to previous years. These oar fish, which are pretty elusive to begin with, live between 200 and 1,000 meters below sea level. They're usually classified as silvery with red fins. Legend has it that these fish beach right before underwater earthquakes, but scientists have frequently disputed that claim. They say there's no scientific evidence to back that claim. But then again, contrary to what scientists say, Right before the 2011 Fukushima earthquake and the tsunami that followed, there were a dozen oarfish washed up on Japan's coastline a year prior. That's a pretty hard thing to explain right there. Whether the scientists are right or it's the people who believe in the myth, these fish are kind of spooky. There's no debate about that. <laughs> Alien creature. Sometimes, no matter how hard you look at something, there's just no telling what it is and then it gets chalked up to being a creature. This applies to this next one. A humanoid sea creature was found alive and kicking on a Chinese beach. The man holding him, or holding it, doesn't look too concerned. But when you look at it, it's downright frightening. Whether you want to call it bizarre, crazy, mysterious, or a mix of everything, this sea creature would be alive while filming. It had been reportedly found floating near the shore and baffled locals as to what it could be. A lot of people were even hesitant to approach it. But of course, there's always that one outcast who has no fear. And as you can see in this video, this man picks it right up and smiles at it. Almost like it's a pet or a family member. What's scary about this thing is how flat it looks. Yet its legs, or bottom half, 
whatever it needs to be called, is moving. But probably the most frightening part about the whole thing is that it almost looks like there's an eye bulging out. It's horror movie type stuff. Dumb theories as to what it could be, or if it's possibly a new species, are all popping up, or maybe it's even a mutated fish. Everyone seems to have their own opinion. But if you ask us, we think it should go back into the water. It's a little too creepy for land. Strange phones. If there's one thing that you probably wouldn't expect to see on the beach, let alone a bunch of them, it's Garfield phones. And yeah, we're talking about the animated cat. Because for 35 years, Garfield phones have been washing up ashore on this beach. And no one knew why. It was a quirk mystery. But now, it might be solved. Since around the 1980s, a coastline in Brittany was never scarce on a supply of bright orange landline novelty phones, which of course were shaped like the famous animated cat Garfield. There have been many people trying to clean this Garfield-written beach, especially those who put on anti-litter campaigns. But this is a whole different type of litter. It's a cat litter, more specifically, Garfield. Now it's not even entire phones to have been washing up on the shore, but it's also pieces of phones. What's been causing these phones to pop up? It's not as mysterious as it may seem. It's simply a lost shipping container. It's basically been confirmed that in the 1980s, a shipping container was blown overboard and all of the precious orange cargo came spilling out. Where did it turn up? We probably don't need to answer that. So if you're looking for a Garfield phone, head out to that shoreline because we can pretty much guarantee that they won't be there for too much longer. Huge pipes. It's as if Super Mario came to real life. Well, the pipes in the game at least, because they are some pretty big pipes. Huge, actually. From the image that's here, you would think that they were constructed to be where they are. But the truth of the matter is, they washed up on shore. It's a pretty frightening thought to think about these giant tubes washing up on the beach. But that's exactly what happened. The specific beach that we're talking about is the coast of Norfolk. They're eight feet in diameter, giant plastic pipes. One of the longest beach segments reaches over a thousand feet long. They wound up here because they came loose since they were being towed by Algeria for a large project. The Maritime Coast Guard Agency says the pipes still pose any danger to the public and they'll probably be relocated offshore. But still, it's a pretty cool sight to see. It's even a little intimidating. <laughs> Rubber ducks. Can you go find 28,000 bath toys? They're also lost at sea. This sounds like a ridiculous sentence, but it's true. Back in 1992, there was a cargo ship container that had fallen into the North Pacific. And when it fell, it dumped around $28,000 of rubber ducks and other bath toys that were headed from China to the US. Now, obviously, the toy didn't just stay in one place. The water took them away. The interesting part about this is that some of the toys even reached Maine. But that's not it. They also showed up on some shores across the Atlantic. This was such a big story that there was a journalist about 13 years after the fact who set out to track the movements of the wayward ducks. And he wanted to do it from his living room. It sounds impossible, but he did this by interviewing a few oceanographers while also talking to a few beachgoers. While at home, he read up on ocean currents and Arctic geography, and then he pieced it all together. It turned out that his research would lead him down a way bigger rabbit hole, tanking him from Seattle to Alaska to even Hawaii. He details this all in his book called Moby Dick, the true story of 28,000 bath toys lost at sea. And the beachcombers, oceanographers, environmentalists, and fools, including the author who went in search of them. That's one heck of a title. But for someone willing to go look for that many ducks, it's expected. <laughs> Easter Egg Hunt we're going to end this list on a positive note, because not all tsunamis and storms turn up terrible or mysterious things. Sometimes it turns up like an Easter egg hunt, a giant one at that. We move on to Germany, where a storm caused a flood of plastic Easter eggs to wash up on shore. For the children of the town, it was like Easter had come early, because the eggs all contained different toys. The eggs were believed to contain instructions in the Cyrillic alphabet and they were dumped from a container that was lost by a cargo ship that had been en route to the German port of Bremerhaven. After hearing about this, we think that the right people got the eggs rather than the original destination. Who doesn't love an Easter egg hunt a little bit early? And there you have it. Storms can be fierce entities. 
You never quite know what you're going to get when the weatherman says there's going to be a storm on the way, especially when it comes to tsunamis which are unpredictable in and of themselves. But on the other end of the spectrum, sometimes you get some awesome discoveries that leave people scratching their heads or watching in awe. So the next time you're dreading a flood or a tsunami, think about what might turn up at the end of it all. It might just be an Easter egg hunt, or maybe it'll be a giant pipe washing up on the shore. Hopefully it's not some humanoid creature, but only time will tell as the world continues to give us interesting marvels to talk about.